If you want to get straight into the action, you can skip ahead to the time code shown. Throughout this game, the white dice will be used for the rangers, and the black dice will be used for the enemies. After searching the ruined village and analysing the clues, Philantus and his companions conclude that the village was assailed by a species of horrific giant spiders with some kind of necrotic venom. With haste, Philantus tracks the spiders to a small forest. Sticky webs hang from the trees and entangle the branches. A creepy chittering can be heard emanating from within. Volantis meets a fellow ranger, also on the tail of these spiders. His name is Lucius, and he's brought some companions with him. With his party bolstered by the forces of Lucius, Volantis decides to send Ray J and Talika back with word of the Fane of Aventine and return his sword to its rightful ancestors. Talika and Ray J leave the party, and Lucius and his companions join the party. Now let's meet everybody. So at the front here with the mask, the red coat, and the cane, we have Lucius. He's a ranger. He's equipped with a sword, a dagger, a staff, and light armor. For stat increases, he's got plus one movement, plus one fight, and plus one health. Behind him in the hat is the men-at-arms, Grimbold, and next to him, the rogue, Alton. And of course, we have Volantis, the hero of the story. He's equipped with a sword, light armor, rope, gun, and ammo pouch, which for rules is a bow and a quiver. He also has armor of brightness, which will give him plus five against shooting attacks. For stat increases, he's got plus one movement, plus one shoot, and plus one fight. His skills are dash, parry, steady aim, and focus, and he also knows the smoke spell. Behind Volantis, he's brought two of his trusty companions. We have Felco, the Elvish Archer. He's equipped with a Dremlock Weed, which we found in the last scenario. And next to him, we have the Elvish Conjurer Ashlyn. She knows the armor spell and the heal spell. In this scenario, we must investigate the five web cocoons for survivors and clues. This can be done while spending an action while in contact with a web cocoon. We will also gain experience for burning down the nest trees. There's four of them and they line the back edge of the table. There's also five spiders present on the table. They're not the strongest fighters in combat. However, the fangs are covered in poison. If a character takes damage from a spider, it will gain the poison state. Poison characters, when they activate, will only have access to one action point. This is pretty nasty, so we really gotta hope we don't get wounded by the spiders. We'll make sure that we pair up and stay close to each other, and we should be fine. Now let's get into it. Ranger phase, turn one. Lucius will activate with Grimbolt. Grimbolt is gonna move forward and engage this spider, while also touching the web cocoon. Lucius will then move up to support Grimbolt and engage the spider as well. Volantis will activate with Felco. Volantis will move forward once to here and then take aim at the spider. Felco will also move up once next to Volantis and take aim at the spider as well. On to second actions now. Lucius will attack the spider with the support of Grimbold. That's a nice roll and easy enough to take down that spider. We're off to a good start. Grimbold now is in contact with the web cocoon, so he'll spend his action to search it. Now we've got to roll on a table to see what we find. Nine, which means Grimbold's found a survivor. Rolling out of the web cocoon is a wounded adventurer, Lavina. Lavina will be treated as one of our companions with the following profile. Movement three, fight plus zero, armor 10, and health five. If we manage to keep her alive until the end of the scenario, that will grant us some bonus experience points. I just wanna say here that we did overlook that she had a movement of three, and we played it as though she had a movement of six. It's an unfortunate mistake, but there's nothing that can be done about it now. So let's continue. Now over to Volantis for his second action. He's gonna shoot at this spider. He does win the roll, but it's not enough to do any damage, so the spider dodges. Now over to Falco to see if he can do any better. Unfortunately, that's a similar roll, and the spider doesn't take any damage. This is a dodgy little spider. Monster phase, turn one. This spider here will move up once, and then again, closing in on Volantis and Falco. The spider under this tree scurries forwards towards Lucius and his companions, moving up once, and then again, to here. The other two spiders move up twice also. Scurrying up onto the rocks. They're getting pretty close. There's definitely going to be some action next turn. Companion phase, turn one. 
Alton's going to move up once around this tree, and then again to get in contact with this web cocoon so we can search it next turn. Lavina now. Deviously, Lucius somehow convinces Lavina that it's a good idea to stand between him and the spiders. Let's just hope she doesn't die so we can bag those experience points. And finally now to Ashlyn. She's going to move up once, and then she's going to cast the armor spell on the land. Ranger phase, turn two. First, Lucius will move up once to support Alton, while also making contact with that web cocoon. Now Grimbold will move up once to support Lavina. Second actions now, Lucius and Grimbold will both just stand still and forfeit their second action. Volantis will group activate with Falco. Volantis is going to shoot at this spider. He's going to use his steady aim skill to add plus 5 to the roll. This time his aim is true and that spider has been eliminated. For Falco's second action, he's just going to reposition and move to here. Monster phase, turn 2. This spider here is first. Hungrily, it dashes forward and engages Lavina. Grimbold snaps in to support. Try not to die, Lavina. With the support from Grimbold there, she's actually done enough to kill that spider. Well done. Now to this spider. Seemingly undeterred by its friend's demise, it charges in to attack Grimbold. Lavina will return the favour and snap in to support. With, with Lavina providing a plus two, that's enough for Grimbold to slay this spider. It looks like it's going to be spider leg soup for the next few nights. And now for this spider up on the rocks. It's going to scurry forward once, and then again to engage Alton. Lucius is close enough to support there, so he's going to snap in to help Alton. Companion phase, turn two. We're going to go to Alton first. He's going to attack this spider, and that's easy enough to take that spider down. It's a bad day to be a spider. With his second action, he's going to search his web cocoon, and that's a four. This time, he finds nothing but a corpse. We're going to remove that cocoon from the table and head over to Ashlyn. With the first action, she's just going to move up to here, and then a second action, she's just going to dirtle along to here, keeping close to all of her friends. Ranger phase, turn three. Lucius is going to activate along with Alton and Grimbold. First, Lucius is going to move up into contact with this web cocoon, followed by Alton, and then Grimbold as well. And now Volantis. He's going to activate by himself and move up into contact with this web cocoon. Second actions now. Grimbold's going to search this web cocoon. Luckily, it's just another dead body. Now Alton and Lucius are both going to move up to here, getting into position to burn some of those nest trees down next turn. Volantis again, he's going to use his second action to search this web cocoon. Let's see what it is. And that's a 20. In this case, it's bad news. A skeleton just rips its way out of that web cocoon as Volantis approaches. We're going to choose to place that skeleton in contact with Volantis. Monster phase, turn three. This skeleton here, ripping its way out of the web cocoon, slashes at Volantis. Ooh, that skeleton's rolled a 20. Volantis is going to have to use his once per game parry ability to avoid taking a heap of damage. Companion phase, turn three. Lavina activates now, still under the influence of Lucius. Like the faithful servant she is, she moves forward once and then again and positions herself between the nest tree and Lucius and his companion. Excellent. Now over to Ashlyn, she's going to move in to engage the skeleton, and a second action, she's just going to idle and wait for Falco. Now to Falco, he's going to move into the melee and attack the skeleton. Oh no! The skeletons really hated being in that cocoon, and with that 20, even with the support from Volantis and Ashlyn, Falco's going to lose and take a big hit. Event phase, turn 3. We flip the red 3, which is web. We've got to roll randomly to determine who's affected. That 13, it's going to be Volantis. Volantis has become entangled in a giant web. At the start of each turn, he's going to make a strength roll, target number 12, and if he fails, he can't activate at all. If he succeeds, he can activate as normal and no longer has to make these tests. 
Lucius and his companions are getting close to burning those nest trees down. And overall, it's looking pretty good for our heroes. Only one skeleton on the board. Alright, so now let's see if Philantus can activate for the turn. He rolls an 8. Unfortunately, without any bonuses from the strength skill, Philantus is going to fail and he can't activate this turn. Ranger phase, turn 4. Lucius is going to group activate with Alton and Lavina. Alton first, he's going to move up once into contact with this nest tree and then Lavina is going to move towards Volantis and his companions and try and help them out of that sticky situation. And finally, Lucius is going to move into contact with this nest tree. And now Volantis activates. Unfortunately, he can't make any actions himself, but he does activate Felco and Ashlan. Felco is going to try and take this skeleton down. And finally, he's ended its reign of terror. It crumbles into dust. Ashlyn's now freed up, so she's going to move up once to here. And then a second move, she's going to move into contact with this nest tree. Then Felco's going to move forward to support Ashlyn to here. And Lavina is going to move up next to Felco. Now second actions for Lucius and Alton. Lucius is going to set fire to this nest tree. That's going to bag us 5 experience points. Excellent. And we're going to mark it as burnt with this blue token. Now to Alton. He's going to do the same, but on this tree, racking up those experience points. Excellent. And we're going to mark this tree with the blue token also. Lucius and Alton doing all the heavy lifting. Companion phase, turn 4. Now we've just got to activate Grimbold in the companion phase. Grimbold's going to move up once to here, and then again to hang out with Ashlyn, Lavina, and Felco. Event phase, turn 4. Red 2, Spider. We have to spawn a spider in contact with one randomly determined nest tree. So there's only two nest trees that aren't burning, which means that it's going to be spawning next to one of these two trees down here. Evens the bottom tree, odds the top tree. And that's an 8 which means we're going to spawn one spider down by this tree here. Okay, so let's see if Philantus can get out of these webs. Unfortunately, with that 9, he's still all webbed up. Ranger phase, turn 5. With Philantus being webbed up, we've only got Lucius to activate in the ranger phase. For his first action, he's going to move up to this nest tree here, and then put it to the top. We're going to mark it with this blue token, and that's another one down. Just one more to go. Excellent. Monster phase, turn five. So in the monster phase, we've just got this cute little guy down here to activate. He's going to scurry forward once to the base of this nest tree, and then again towards Ashlan. Unfortunately for him, he's not quite going to make it into combat. Companion phase, turn five. In the companion phase, Felco's going to activate first to see if he can take this little spider out. And that's a critical hit. With exquisite finesse and precision, Felco delivers that spider a swift death. And then with his second action, he's going to move to the far side of that web cocoon. Now to Lavina. She's going to move around beside Felco and make contact with that web cocoon. And now it's Grimbold's turn. He's going to move up into contact with this web cocoon. And with his second action, he's going to search it. 18, which means another skeleton. So we're going to remove that web cocoon and spawn a skeleton right in the middle of all our companions. And now it's over to Ashlyn. She's going to move forward once. With all the support from her friends, she's going to make an attack against this skeleton. And that 17 is easily going to be enough to destroy that skeleton. And now finally, to Alton. He's going to spend both of his actions to move up here next to his master, Lucius. So at the end of that turn, it's looking pretty good for our heroes. There's only one more nest tree to torch, and it's right there in the corner. There's no enemies present, or web cocoons left. So let's see how we go, going into the next turn. So at the start of the turn, let's see if Atlantis can finally break out of these webs. And he's done it with that 12. Ranger phase. Turn 6. Philantus is going to activate first. He needs to start to lead by example. So he's going to move up once to here. And then again to finish next to Felco. 
Now to Lucius. He's going to group activate with Alton. Firstly, he's going to move to here. And then again, into contact with this last nest tree. And then Alton is going to do much the same thing. Moving once to here. And then around behind Lucius to here. Companion phase, turn six. All right, so I lost a little bit of footage here. But everybody just moved up towards this last nest tree. And Lavina set it on fire. And we called the mission there. With the heroes being victorious. Because Lavina survived to the end of the scenario, we're going to get an extra 10 experience points. And also, because we burnt all four of the nest trees down, that's going to give us another 8 experience points. So in total, we made 62 experience points from that scenario. That's going to increase Volantis to level 2. Which is going to allow us to put one point into 8 different skills. I feel like that mission was a little bit easier than it was meant to be. And it was mainly because of the presence of a second ranger. We did roll pretty well early against the spiders, which helped for sure. But it might be an idea for future games to increase the difficulty by using the suggested challenge level in the scenario setup. Just some food for thought for the future with games involving more than one ranger. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you can show us some support by giving a like and subscribing to the YouTube channel. There's a bunch more videos coming up. The next scenario in this campaign is going to be the Bridge Guards. I do hope you'll join me for that one. Until then, take it easy, have fun, and happy gaming. See you in the next one.